Greetings to all of you. The session is regarding intermediate chemistry, which will be fetching for your international entrance and competitive exams as well. Indian government is conducting a JE advanced. JE means examination for IIT and NIT admissions, that is the technical demand. And in addition, NEET exam will be conducted all across India, that is a medical entrance examination. Telangana and Andhra Pradesh government are conducting MCET examination to get admission into BTEC stream. Right. In addition, if you are aspiring for any government organized jobs like government uh, competitive examinations, general studies common question paper will be found. In that general studies paper, general science in the content, what we are uh, discussing is very much helpful for that kind of preparation. Let's go with the question number one. How the polythene synthesis changed the world? Polythene is the kind of polymer and is regarded as the plastic material and its synthesis paved the way and entirely changed the profile of the world. Uh, earlier, before the invention of this polythene, most of the things are related with the huge expensive materials and uh, heavy materials and machineries or else ma metal materials can be used so that it is highly expensive, can, cannot be afforded for the normal humans. And uh, so it is very difficult to transport the system and store the kind of... Uh, uh, whatever home household uh, food ingredients are all and also for the transportation purpose it is very difficult so uh, in, in order to make the ease of this kind of all these uh, livelihood the invention of polythene is a kind of a new perception and a new kind of uh, uh, living standards evolved into the life history of human right so that we can say polythene is the plastic which is uh, uh, especially used for food packaging devices polythene covers we can use no polythene covers for uh, food packaging devices and uh, uh, you can make the furniture without of this. Polythene sheets will be there. Polythene pipes will be there. Polythene ties will be there. In the sports articles, you can use them. So many kind of advantageous, inven uh, advantageous materials can be made by means of this polythene. In the year 1898, German chemist Hans von Pechmann is the scientist who uh, accidentally invented this material. A waxy material can be discovered. Uh, in his uh, research, uh, so that uh, he examined that material further and uh, he gone through the uh, properties of that waxy material, which he ever found uh, accidentally in his uh, research lab, so that uh, he understood that it is a kind of repeated combination of so many units, it is a kind of a bulky molecule, it is a polymer uh, investigated, right? They used to make their plastic wasn't particularly practical, so much like a pencil in story. No progress was made for the some considerable time. Though it was invented accidentally, but uh, it, its exploration of research was not done for a lot of time. In the year 1933, entirely different method for making plastic was discovered. So here initially it is uh, found uh, accidentally but they don't know how to how to synthesize same kind of material further uh, in the economic pathway so that uh, after a long duration 1898 is the time where it was found and uh, after a long gap 1933 a new invention new pathway got introduced in order to make the plastic in the scalable manner right by the chemist and now uh, defunct chemical company ICI. ICI invented the mechanistic way for the synthesis of this plastic. They were working on the high pressure reactions and notice the same waxy material, whatever Von Peckman uh, uh, found in his laboratory. As first they uh, failed to reproduce the fact until they noticed that the original reaction oxygen had leaked into the system. Two years later, ICA had turned into a uh, serendipitous discovery into a practical method to produce the common plastic almost uh, certainly within easy reach of you. No. So whatever polythene we know. So, so many, so many trials, so many trials of uh, investigation. Finally, we could able to generate this um, polythene in the industrial scale of synthesis. That is the way the introduction of polythene 
everything was done into the human kind and uh, it is a part of life now so polythene everywhere we can use polythene packaging system will be there polythene sheets are available and uh, food containers are made up of polythene polythene pipes are available in so many fields you can apply this polythene so that it is the kind of wonder invention in the world and being it is a plastic polymeric material uh, find a wide range of applications at the economic pathway and this is the chemical uh, uh, synthesis of uh, polythene started with the ethylene monomeric unit repeatedly polymerized in order to synthesize this uh, long lengthy chain complicated molecule said to be polythene this is the way polythene synthesis carried over and we entered into question number two it is collected from cambridge assessment international education explain in terms of structure and bonding why potassium chloride is uh, having high melting point in comparison to the chlorine potassium chloride was taken and uh, compared with the chlorine molecule right so uh, here in order to answer this the topics taken into the consideration types of particle held together by forces of attractions what forces are there in the potassium chloride what are there in the chlorine types of forces uh, between the particles what forces are operated relative strength of forces of relative strength where uh, the strong bond where the weak bond is located everything to be noticed uh, in order to make the uh, right uh, justification for potassium chloride is stronger uh, in the bond formation in comparison to the chlorine molecule, um, it is proceeded with the it is proceeded with the ionic bond formation in the potassium chloride. Potassium chloride uh, able to form the uh, bond by the transfer of electrons from metallic potassium to non-metallic chlorine. Being potassium is highly electropositive in nature, having natural tendency to lose the electron in order to attain the nearby noble gas electronic configuration so that it will lose the electron very fastly so that K positive will be generated later on. Chlorine being it is a non-metal uh, short of electron will be there having natural tendency to gain the electron in order to reach by its nearby electronic configuration organ so that chlorine will attain the electron uh, negatively charged will be generated. This is the way potassium loses and the chlorine will accept and uh, by um, what we can say here two uh, charged particles are generated called ions they held together by electrostatic forces of attractions the forces operating among potassium chlorine is called the strong electrostatic forces of attractions which held the molecule very firmly so that in order to break the bond it requires high temperature that is the reason why melting point of this potassium chloride is said to be higher uh, if you move on to uh, if you move on to this chlorine molecule where both the chlorines are homogeneous both are equal equipotent in nature so that uh, two chlorines are having one electron in its valency shell and short of one electron for each so that they are contributing electrons mutually so that sharing of electrons takes place in between two chlorine atoms by covalent bond formation. This is the kind of covalent bond uh, and the mutual sharing of electrons and exactly laying in between the two chlorine atoms. So whatever covalent bond formed is a non-polar being it is the uh, identical type of molecule. Non-polar in nature and weak forces are operated over here so that we can say it is of weak bond. In order to rupture this weak bond extremely low temperature is required in comparison to the potassium chloride this is the way melting point of potassium chloride will be higher because of its covalent nature and being chlorine is made up of non-polar covalent bond being it is a weak compare in comparison to polar ionic bond so that uh, uh, easily broken this is the way we can explain with the uh, what uh, melting point values of potassium chloride and the uh, covalent chlorine molecule right move on to question number three question number three is collected from uh 2023 je advanced question paper paper one question it is the correct statements related to the process involved in the extraction of metal the question collected from metallurgical process and during the extraction of metal, what topics are said to be correct? In order to give the reasons, B is correct, C is correct, D is correct. B, C, D are the correct answers. They are mentioned with the tick mark. Uh, let's see the options first. Later on, we will confirm which is correct, which is wrong. Roasting of malachite produces cuprite. Malachite upon roasting produces cuprite. 
calcination of calamine produces zincite the calcination stands for uh, heating of any substance in the absence of oxygen is called a calcination copper pyrite is, is heated uh, with the silica in reverberatory furnace to remove the iron impure silver is treated with aqueous potassium cyanide in the presence of oxygen followed by the reduction with zinc metal right so roasting of malachite produces cuprite let's see whenever copper uh, copper carbonate copper hydroxide existing together there is a combination of copper carbonate and copper hydroxide this is uh, said to be the uh, mineral called malachite whenever this malachite is heated at high temperature the uh, heating at higher mm -hmm. temperature is called what roasting method whenever this roasting is carried what happens this copper carbonate will be converted into copper oxide and copper hydroxide is converted into copper oxide again so in both the cases here car car carbonate is converted into carbon dioxide and here whatever hydroxide part is there that is removed as a water so that the leftover will be copper oxide only in both the copper carbonate copper hydroxide both will be turned into cuo this is called cupric oxide let me repeat again cupric oxide will be generated right so whenever cupric oxide is formed copper existing in plus 2 oxidation state around the central copper metal roasting is the kind of heating at higher temperature in the excess of oxygen is required in the presence of sufficient oxygen it will be heated at higher temperature so that uh, copper will be converted into copper oxide which is a cupric oxide but uh, they are saying within the first one they are saying that cuprite will be formed cuprite is made up of cu2o cu 2 o denotes what cu plus 1 cuprous oxide it is but actually we got a cupric oxide cuprous oxide cupric oxide there is a difference in their oxidation state around the central metal so we can't get this cuprite in that process roasting method so that whatever they mentioned in the a is wrong move on to option number b they are saying that calcination means heating in the absence of air calcination of calamine calamine is made up of water zinc carbonate uh, we need to heat the zinc carbonate in the absence of air. So upon heating, the zinc carbonate now turned into zinc oxide. Zinc carbonate is converted into zinc oxide and the carbonate now turned into carbon dioxide. This is the way zincite uh, uh, calamine is converted into zinc oxide. Right, so that uh, whatever they are zincite formation is correct only. They are saying calamine calcination gives a zincite that is perfect. Move on to option number C. Option number C, they are saying that copper pyrites is heated with silica, reverberatory furnace to remove the iron. Copper pyrites means what? Copper iron sulfide. Always pyrites denotes a sulfide only. Any ore con consisting sulfur that is called pyrites. Okay, copper iron pyrites, copper iron sulfide upon treating with oxygen and heated at higher temperature, you can achieve copper uh, cuprous sulfide and iron oxide will be generated, sulfur dioxide will be formed. Cuprous sulfide, iron oxide and sulfur dioxide will be formed. Uh, whatever whatever ferric uh, ferrous oxide formed can be treated with silica so that the iron silicate, the slag will be removed. So whatever copper pyrite is heated with silica to remove the iron, iron removed as a slag, that slag is iron silicate. So this is the way iron can be removed. The, whatever they are saying is perfectly correct. Move on to another fourth one. Impure silver is treated with aqueous potassium cyanide. Whenever you know, whenever uh, you are trying to extract the silver metal in the pure form, that silver impure one can be treated with potassium cyanide and uh, subjected to oxidation process, and it will be converted into a complex potassium silver, potassium dicyano argentate. Let me repeat potassium dicyano argentate will be formed that potassium dicyano argentate uh, upon treating with zinc uh, what happens there is a exchange of metals you can notice the silver will be replaced with zinc metal so zinc will be formed over and pure silver will be extracted in this manner so silver is obtained by uh, reaction with zinc so zinc is the metal used to form the purest form of silver over here Impure silver is treated with aqueous potassium cyanide in the presence of oxygen 
followed by reduction with zinc. That is the proper way for the extraction of silver. Pure silver can be extracted. B is correct, C is correct, D is correct, A is wrong. You can't get cuprate, rather you can get cupric oxide. So for question number three, B, C, D are the correct answers. Move on to question number four. In the question number four, the series of chemical reactions pertaining organic compounds with the suitable reagents are mentioned. And finally, you could have to achieve products like B, P, Q, R, S. These many products are expected to be reached out. So if this is the condition, correct the statements about P, Q, R, S, R. Um, both P and Q have a asymmetric carbon atoms. Both Q and R have a asymmetric carbon atom. Both P, Q have asymmetric carbon atoms. P have asymmetric carbon. S doesn't have any asymmetric carbon atom. Uh, in order to answer this, first of all, we have to notice what is asymmetric carbon. Asymmetric carbon denotes any carbon with the four different functional groups around is said to be an asymmetric carbon atom, right? So that is uh, alternatively known as a chiral carbon. Mentioned with the star mark, asterisk mark will be mentioned over. Again, this is a question collected from 2023 JE Advanced 2023 question paper. Paper one question it is... Uh, Okay. In order to answer these four options, first of all, we have to know what is product P, product Q, product R and S. If you are going with the series of reactions, after getting these products, we will consider these statements. So let's see that step-by-step -step synthesis of individual products. First of all, we are taking the starting material, which is said to be 3-methylpentane nitrile, 5-carbon chain with the methyl side chain. And the CN is said to be nitrile. And this is called Grignard reagent. Phenyl magnesium bromide is called Grignard reagent. Whenever Grignard reagent is added to this kind of nitrile, the uh, required product will be imine. You can achieve a double bond NH. Double bond NH further, uh, further again, uh, one more molecule of Grignard reagent of same reagent will be added phenyl magnesium bromide. So another double bond is also participate in the addition reaction so that you can achieve the phenyl phenyl bond over here. And the final product is expected to be 3-methyl. 3-methyl remains as such. We are not supposed to change where the phenyl is uh, uh, substituted on the first carbon. 3-methyl 1,1 diphenyl and the leftover chain is pentane chain only. We are not supposed to change the parent chain length. 1 comma 1 diphenyl pentane, 1 amine. Amine is there on the first carbon so that 1 amine can be mentioned. <laughs> this is the name of product P. Product P is achieved by series of two Grignard reagent reactions. In the first reaction, one phenyl giving imine and the second reaction, uh, another phenyl attached so that amine will be formed. Next uh, reaction, benzene is taken as a starting material. Benzene treated with acetyl chloride. Acetyl chloride is the acylating agent in the presence of anhydrous AlCl3. AlCl3 is the Lewis acid catalyst. So that acylation carried by replacing H plus with the CH3C double bond O. And HCl can be removed. You will get a CH3C double bond O pH, which is called what uh, acetophenone. This is the ketonic compound. This ketone further subjected to Grignard reaction with a phenyl magnesium bromide. Whenever Grignard reagent and subsequent hydrolysis is carried under acidic condition, always ketone reaction with Grignard reagent gives a tertiary alcohol. pH will be attached to the carbon. Oxygen will be attached with the magnesium bromide. And subsequently, oxygen got uh, uh, hydrolyzed. You will get OH. On this carbon, already one pH is there, one more pH will be added. pH denotes phenyl. Phenyl means a C6H5, that is benzene ring. Uh, one of the methyl already existing, we are not changing. And whatever double bond O is there, that is converted into OH. This is the compound Q. You can mention it, uh, its name as 1 comma 1 diphenyl ethanol, two carbon chain, so that ethanol. This is the second reaction. Move on to R product. Uh, we are taking the starting material CH3, C double bond was the uh, CH3, CH2, C double bond was here. This is the acid chloride. Acid chloride uh, is treated with alkyl cadmium. 
this is the organo metallic compound any organo metallic compound having organic moiety negative charge metal always electro positive everybody aware that so that you can get a ph ch2 negative cadmium positive like this okay so whatever um, negative charge is generated on this benzyl ph ch2 is designated as a benzyl this benzyl will be added at carbonylic carbonatum and uh, whatever double bond is there that is converted into OH and uh, you can substitute benzyl over here. This is not finite, it is benzyl later on. Uh, one more molecule of phenyl magnesium bromide will be added. This phenyl magnesium bromide is the Grignard reagent and subsequently hydrolyzed. Whenever this is the condition, chloro will be replaced with another pH. Chloro will be replaced with pH so that this is the R product you can notice. In order to get S product, we are taking uh, the compound called 2-phenyl acetaldehyde. This is the compound treated with Grignard reagent and subsequent hydrolysis. Whatever aldehyde is there that converted into secondary alcohol, pH will be attached to the carbon and secondary alcohol will be formed. This is called 1,2-diphenyl ethanol, aldehyde converted into alcohol and uh, treated with Zons reagent. What is Zons reagent? Chromium oxide mixture with the dilute sulfuric acid is called Zons reagent. Uh, wh wherever you can find alcohol that turned into a ketonic compound, right? Mild oxidizing agent. That's why alcohol to ketone will be formed. Formed ketone can be treated with HCN. HCN is the kind of uh, reagent which used to attach a nucleophilic addition at the carbonylic carbon. Always carbonylic compound treated with HCN gives a water cyanonitriles the addition product is called a cyanonitrile uh, sorry cyanohydrins cyanohydrins will be generated so that you can achieve ccnoh ccnoh this uh, entity is called a cyanohydrin the cyanohydrin whatever generated can be treated with sulfuric acid heating everybody aware sulfuric acid is the kind of dehydrating agent let me remove water over here whenever water removed you can achieve a double bond like this whenever double bond formed that uh, is said to be a product uh, s let's go with the one by one options over here p and q have asymmetric carbons let's see p so uh, can you find asymmetric carbon over here Asymmetric carbon means four different functional groups. This is uh, NH2 is there. This is pH. This is pH. We can't say this is the asymmetric carbon atom. This is not supposed to be asymmetric because pH, pH are same, no? So that we can cancel over here. If you go with this carbon atom, so let me consider this carbon. On this carbon, one side you can notice ethyl and one hydrogen is there. One methyl is there and entire big bulky group is there. So that this carbon is said to be asymmetric carbon. Ethyl, hydrogen, methyl and this entire bulky group one side. So four different functional groups so that this is the asymmetric carbon in this product P. So this is correct only. P is having asymmetric carbon. Let's go with Q. If you observe Q compound, uh, C. This carbon is surrounded with one side phenyl, any other side phenyl. If two similar groups are present, can you say asymmetric or symmetric? Two similar groups if present on the same carbon, that is said to be symmetric carbon, but not asymmetric. So you can cancel out Q. Whatever option mentioned in uh, both P, Q are asymmetric carbons, wrong one. Q are asymmetric carbons, also wrong one. In the country, Q is not having any asymmetric carbon atom over here. Q is not at all having asymmetric carbon so that you can cancel option B also. Then move on to C. P, R have asymmetric carbons. Let's go with R. If you go with R, can you find asymmetric carbon here? Uh, asymmetric carbon. Uh, sorry, here uh, I have to write this, uh, write this side. So uh, whatever pH, CH2 is there that to be mentioned here. pH, CH2 is called benzyl one side pH on either side so that this carbon is said to be asymmetric carbon. So R is said to be uh, R is said to be chiral or asymmetric carbon because here uh, by mistake I wrote as pH but instead you have to write it as a pH CH2. If pH CH2 is there this side pH will be there here 
OH is there, CH3, CH2, four different functional groups around this carbon, we can say it is the asymmetric. So, uh, P's and R both are having asymmetric carbon atoms. This C option is perfectly correct. Move on to D option. P has asymmetric carbon. P has asymmetric carbon. Already we understood this is the carbon called chiral or asymmetric carbon atom. And S does not have any asymmetric carbon. S, let's go with S. If you observe S in that, carbon is having double bond over here. So the double bonded carbon not applicable with the asymmetric nature. Four different groups when present, then only asymmetric. If you go with this carbon here also double bond is there. So that there is no way possibility of asymmetric carbon atom or chiral carbon for this S. So uh, S is not having chiral carbon, they are saying perfectly correct. So that P asymmetric carbon, S no asymmetric carbons are present, you can put a tick mark. C is correct over here, D is also correct. So that C, D are the correct answers for question number four. Move on to question number five. Question number five is based on uh, uh, based on the problematic session and moreover it is the kind of empirical formula based one. Uh, organic chemistry based question. An organic compound contains 60% carbon, 4.48% hydrogen, 35.5% 35, 35 of oxygen. If this is the case, its empirical formula is, okay, let me repeat, carbon content is 60%, hydrogen content is 4.48%, Oxygen content is 35.5%. Then, what is the empirical formula? In order to calculate the empirical formula, we have a certain procedure. In order to go with, the expected answer is C9H8O4. C9H8O4 is the expected product for this reaction so that it is indicated with the tick mark. Let's see how can we achieve C9H8O4 is known to be a chemical well-known familiar compound called aspirin and it is having carbon 60%, hydrogen 4.48 and oxygen 35.5%. Uh, so this is the case. So that number of moles are 984. 984 are given for carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. How can we get this? Let's go with the step-by-step. Uh, -step. Uh, solution for the question. In order to make the solution, first of all, we have to draw the table pertaining serial number, what element we have, percentage of element in that, atomic masses, and the number of moles to be calculated. Here we have a carbon of 60% and 12 is the atomic mass. In order to calculate number of moles, the percentage of by num uh, atomic mass to be taken, 60 by 12 will become 5 moles for carbon. Hydrogen, a percentage of element is 4.48, atomic mass is 1. 4.48 by 1 remains as 4.48 number of moles. Oxygen, percentage of element is 35.5, atomic mass is 16. 35.5 by 16, it will be 2.2 number of moles. In order to calculate the percentage of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, so their moles to be taken. So 5 moles for carbon. 4.48 moles for hydrogen, oxygen uh, 2.2 moles will be there. After taking their number of moles, they can be divided with the least possible integer. Least possible value is 5, 4.48, 2.2. Among these three values, 2.2 is the least value. That to be taken as the uh, dividing factor, dividing factor for this kind of percentile determination. So that 5 by 2.2, 4.48 by 2.2, 2.2 by 2.2. You can cancel out 2.2 over here so that here ratio will be 1. 4.48 by 2.2, it will be 2. 5 by 2.2, the ratio will be 2.27. Carbon content is 2.27. Hydrogen content is 2. Oxygen content is 1, right? So this is this is not like a this is not like a, uh, a full integer value. In order to make the value into full integer, we have to multiply with the same factor. If three decimals are if three uh, numerals are uh, multiplied with the same factor, value will not be changed. Everybody aware that. 
so uh, in order to make the full integer this is the decimal point you know we can't write uh, we can't write nan stoichiometric ratio for the given compound that's the reason why so make a, a round up of the value it can be multiplied with the same integer same value can be taken 2.27 multiplied with 4 2 multiplied with 4 1 multiplied with 4 2.27 multiplied with 4 the value is 9 4 multiplied with 2 is 8. 1 multiplied with 4 is 4. 9 contributes carbon. 8 contributes hydrogen. 4 contributes oxygen. So that's C9H8O, which is called aspirin. This is the way the way uh, calculation for the um, empirical formula was done. So for question number 5, For question number five, option number one is the correct answer. Move on to question number six. Question number six, the number of sodium ions present in 0 0.5 moles of sodium ferrocyanide is. Okay. So it is again the problem-based question. We chosen problem-based question here. The number of sodium ions present in 0 0.5 moles of sodium ferrocyanide. Okay. 0.5 mole sodium ferrocyanide loni sodium ion la sankhya enta. In order to calculate this, first of all, we have to know sodium ferrocyanide formula. Sodium ferrocyanide where sodium ions are 4 and ferrocyanide iron uh, surrounded with the 6 ligands, 6 nitrile ligands like this and it is accompanied by the minus 4 charge uh, around, around this uh, coordination sphere. This is the way sodium ferrocyanide complex will be represented. Okay. So, uh, the expected answer is 12 into 10 to the power 23. Right. So, the question is, the number of sodium ions present in 0 0.5 moles of sodium ferrocyanide. How many moles, how many number of sodium ions are there? 12 into 10 to the power 23 number of sodium ions are there in 0 0.5 moles of sodium ferrocyanide. In order to get this uh, problem, so very simple calculation is provided. One mole of sodium ferrocyanide contains Avogadro number of molecules. Avogadro number is 6.02 into 10 to the power 23. So if this is for one mole, then 0 0.5 mole only we are considering. For 0 0.5 moles, what is the value of number of molecules right so in order to make this you have to go for the cross multiplication 0 0.5 into 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 by 1 so that uh, the re requisite answer over here will be 0 0.5 into 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 the value is 3.01 into 10 to the power 23 3.01 into 10 to the power 23 for 0 0.5 moles we got. Okay. In one mole of sodium ferrocyanide, how many sodium atoms are there? Number of sodium atoms. Can you notice? Sodium atoms are 4. Okay. So, for one mole, you know that 3 into 10 to the power 23 molecules will be there. Okay. Then, for 4 atoms of sodium, what is the value? Then, whatever molecules you got 3.01 into 10 to the power 23 that can be multiplied with 4 atoms of sodium so that 4 3s are 12 into 10 to the power 23 12 into 10 to the power 23 is given in the option number 3 for question number 6 option number 3 is the correct answer this is the way we solved the entire session and we gone with the reaction mechanism uh, according to the organic chemistry and we gone with the world order changing invention called uh, uh, polythene and uh, another kind of inorganic session got covered over uh, physical chemistry problematic session we got derived everything uh, whatever important corners are there in the chemistry level and in specific intermediate level we covered each and every part so that we can say the session is real informative and like the channel uh, in order to make me uh, to encourage to get such kind of content in the near future in the larger extent so that i'll get the kind of encouragement to hmm, go for the another new content regarding this domain and uh, in order to make the comment for this uh, video, we have a question over here. Uh, the question related with the 
question related with the polymers. Okay. So in this session, we covered with the polythene writer. You can mention your own uh, examples related with the uh, polymers. Whatever polymers you know, you can mention in the comment box. Okay. Example for the polymers you know, right? That can be mentioned. And share with these parents who are very serious about the examinations and subscribe the channel to receive more updates in the near future. Thank you one and all.